Hey, Solar Ken back with another video on the 10 questions to ask before installing solar. If you haven't done so already, please go like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification bell so that way you're alerted whenever I drop a new video. And I drop content consistently on four homeowners that are interested in going solar and want to learn a little bit more before I decide deciding to make a decision to go solar. So let's get right into this video on 10 questions to ask before getting in solar installed. So these are 10 questions that you should ask, and it doesn't have to be necessarily in this order, but you should be thinking into these questions before you actually make a decision to have a solar salesperson come over, or you decide to actually pursue installing solar. You should be able to answer these questions backwards and forwards, but before you actually call a person like myself out, in order for you to actually get into this uh, new age of producing your own power. So let's get into the question number one on, why should I go solar? And most homeowners will ask themselves this and they don't really have an answer. And the answer will be, it's cheaper than buying power from an electricity company. And most homeowners will tell me like, well, my power is pretty cheap right now. What I mean by cheaper is, if you're paying $100 right now and I've saved you $1 at $99, you, you'll be paying for your solar it makes more sense, right? I'm saving you $1. But not only that is that $99 is gonna stay the same if you're making a monthly payment on the system until it's paid off. That $100 is gonna increase by 2% or 3%, which means next year it's gonna be $103 or $105, however much the increase is gonna be. And if you comp as you compound that on top of each other over a course of 20 to 30 years, you start to see that at $99 at year 25, or at $250 at year 25 is two totally different prices. So it definitely is cheaper than staying with the utility company and there's an end goal to it, which means you don't actually have to come out of pocket anymore. You can basically save money by just owning your system. Once you've done paying the system off, you own it outright. Now you add a value to your house. Just makes more sense than staying with the utility company. The next one is gonna be, there's gonna be zero upfront costs. You don't actually have to come out of pocket, which means it's just like turning on your utility company or whenever you move in, maybe you have to put a deposit down for your utility company, but in most cases, you just turn on power on, you move in, you make your monthly payment the next month. In this case, it's the same concept where you're actually gonna get installed, you're actually not gonna have to put any money down, and then you make your monthly payment as soon as this system gets installed and turned on and ready and powered up. So it just makes more sense than staying with the utility company. And I guess another reason why is you're doing right by the environment. You gotta think about it. At the end of the day, we need to do something better than we, what we've been doing as a society. And why not contribute to that by going solar and providing a cleaner environment for my kids and your kids to thrive in for years to come. Question number two, is solar right for my house? And what that means is it can be, depending on how your roof is orientated. If your roof faces direct south or maybe southeast or southwest, it could be a prime, a prime roof for your home. But does your roof have pipes, vents, and other objects like skylights deterring you from installing solar on top of it? Because if that's the case, then that could be an issue when it comes down to guess getting the best production. If there's a lot of obstructions up there, then you might not have the best production when it comes down to the system that you're installing. Now, a new roof is perfect for solar. If you just got a roof installed or you have a roof that's been life that's been um, recently installed within the last 10 years, that's gonna be an ideal roof to go solar with. So that's gonna be the best scenario for a roof. Now, if you're on the latter end of that, where you're having like issues with your roof already, or you need to get another roof before, then you definitely would make, need to make the decision before actually getting it solar installed is make sure your roof is in working condition. And then have, like I said, having a south facing roof is gonna be the best oriented way for your solar to be installed on. Question number three is gonna be, is my electric bill high enough for solar? As long as your bill is over $75, it definitely makes sense to go solar. And it's really not about the dollar amount that you're paying per 
your for your bill it's more about the price per kilowatt that you're paying to your utility company but with that even being said when you decide to stay with the utility company the utility rates are always going to go up because they have to keep up with their infrastructure and alongside of inflation just like gas is like almost five dollars five and a half dollars right now easily electricity is going to go up alongside of it because it takes energy to produce energy and it takes energy to deliver energy so there's going to be surcharges and upcharges and things that happen because of the things that are going on in the world and when you decide to buy a system at whatever price that you buy that system at it's locked in at that rate for the duration of their solar system until you pay it off and there's very there's a lot of great options to pay it off a lot sooner but as a homeowner you have to be willing to i guess take a leap on that you're making an investment versus just stand and being dictated by the utility company at whatever prices that they have question number four how should i finance my panels the best way to buy solar is to buy it cash. That's going to be your best way. If you have the amount of money that it's going to cost you to get it installed outright, then cash is king. That's usually not the case for most homeowners, but there are other options that are just as good as cash that you could take up that might even work out better for you because of the eliminating of other things. So the best way that I know to buy solar besides buying solar with cash out, right, cash in hand, it's gonna be a solar refi or basically refine your home to take out enough equity to pay for your solar in cash. So it's just the same thing. But the thing, the reason why most homeowners would do that is because you get to eliminate your monthly payment for your solar bill and your electricity bill and take the dollar amount that you were gonna to have to either A, pay to your solar company or B, pay to your utility company and reinvest that into your home, which pays down your mortgage a lot faster which eliminates the interest on your solar bill, which could pay down your monthly mortgage a lot faster than what it was. And now the monthly money that you were saving from the, the electricity bill is going right back into your home and right back into your investment or back into your pocket. That means you don't actually have to pay it anymore. And there's options to do that solar refi that I can help you out with. If you want to click the link in the bio, it's going to be Solar King and Energy King. I'd be more than happy to go through a call with you to actually talk about the options. The next options will be a traditional solar finance, dealing with a solar finance company like Good Leap, Mosaic, Green Sky. These are all companies that provide solar financing for homeowners who are interested in going solar that don't have the cash, that don't want to put money out of pocket, that do have the qualifications to qualify for solar. That way you can actually get it installed. Mind you, you still have a monthly payment at whatever interest rate you qualify for. And at the end of the day, it's still better than staying with the utility company because the payment is still better and you're still investing into your home. Number five, how much does solar cost? Now that's gonna vary depending on which market you're in from New York to California. There's gonna be a few different prices and depending on what the supply chain is over there. But the average cost in the state of Texas should be around $3.60 to about $4.25. And that's gonna be fully installed alongside financing, which for your solar panels, your inverter, your racking, your in labor, and then also financing. Now, if you decide to pay cash, it might be a little bit cheaper, only due to the fact that you don't have to have finance fees incorporated into that price, but also that it's going to be a lot cheaper because cash is king. And remember that you can always get things a little bit faster when you decide to pay cash, but most homeowners don't have that option available to them, so we usually tend to finance. Now, when you're asking about additional items or adders like batteries, Generax, uh, we roofs, things in that nature. You're gonna probably add another 35 to easily a dollar 30, depending on the service that you're actually adding to the deal. That way you can actually get that installed. A battery usually tends to add about a dollar onto any given deal. So if you're sitting at $4, you should be probably around $5 to $5.20 to get your battery, solar system, and everything else included installed at the same time. Question number six is going to be, how much would I save if I decide to go solar? There's no exact number that we can tell you that's going to be accurate because that depends on a ton of different variables. It depends on how much you use power-wise. It depends on how fast your family grows. It depends on how much you're, you're actually going to be consuming power or how little you're going to be consuming power. That's going to fluctuate depending on the days, the months, and how much this sun that you actually get to produce the system for, from the system. What that means is you're going to probably save somewhere around 25 to 35% on the average. The average is about 30% over a course of 30 to 40 years. 
depending on again how how much sunlight you get depending on how fast your family grows so a ton of other factors but around 30 percent should be your average number seven what type of panels and inverters should i be looking for and i tell my clients that you should probably look at the newest equipment on the market anything above 390 watt panels is going to be ideal for any installation right now when i first got into the industry i was using 210s now we're at 390 to 400 watt panels if i'm going to do an installation for you right now most likely i'm going to use 400 watt q cells um they're going to give you basically everything that you need out of a panel they're going to be black on black anything that's going to be sleek and perform like they're supposed to this is something that you want and phase inverters is something that you're going to want to get involved in as well because they provide a 25 year warranty alongside the panels and pretty much they're going to be the most efficient when it comes down to getting the power that you in the production you need out of your system so also you can use solar edge i also use solar edge depending on the job it just it just depends but solar edge inverters work well as well they do have a a faulty rate sometimes they can't go out but again they have a warranty that comes alongside of it which can be extended to 25 years number eight is going to be how long will my panels last now the average lifespan of a solar system should be around 25 to 35 years on give or take depending on like i said the weather conditions the elements that has been involved in now mind you these panels have, are going to produce power up into the year 40s, but they're gonna be produced at a very low rate compared to what they once were when they first were installed. But you gotta imagine they're 30 to 40 years old. Again, most panels come with a 25 year warranty on them. And then on most inverters, especially in phase, come with a 25 year warranty on them. So if they go out in year 22, then you obviously have a warranty that covers that as well. And like I said, these panels can produce power up into their 40 or 50 year lifespan if they if you decide to keep them for that long but again in 25 years they still should have a decent production coming off of them number nine is going to be do the solar panels and inverters have a warranty on them i kind of re previously touched on this standard solar panel is going to have a 25 year warranty on it that's going to be pretty standard for any panel that's being sold in the marketplace and then you have your warranties on your in-phase inverters which is going to be another 25 years and then your standard warranty for like a solar edge a sunny boy uh one of the one of those particular inverters is going to be about 12 10 to 12 years like, that can be extended to 25 years if you decide to go to, with the extended warranty on your system which most people should because these systems are obviously uh, the most i guess expensive one of the most expensive purchases that you could make for your home but with that being said, again, 25-year uh, warranty is pretty standard on your panels, your in-phase inverters, and about 12 years that can be extended to 25 years on your solar edge. Number 10 is going to be what maintenance will the system need? And that's going to be pretty standard. Like, there is not a lot of maintenance that goes on with these systems. You can do a little bit of cleaning to them, spraying them off, cleaning them off, having them done at least every quarter or if not twice a year at at least twice a year for sure because of the elements and dust and depending on the climate that you live in getting them cleaned off so they can stay productive and in the most efficient as possible during their lifespan but again there's very little maintenance when it comes down to the system itself now there's going to be some monitoring that is, that's going to need to be done which you're going to have an app to do that from your phone you can pretty much monitor your system from anywhere in the world by just looking through your solar edge app or your m phase app in whatever app that's being provided to you by your installer that way you can monitor the production that's coming off of the system over that duration of the, the years that you have the system installed but definitely that's going to be the, the tenth question so i do have a bonus question that you can take for for what it's worth now most homeowners don't understand that this is probably the biggest one of the biggest questions you need to ask is how do i know which company to trust and what you should do is you should look them every company that you work with you should look them up on google to see what their google reviews are on the better business bureau website and then also look up angie's list just to get a fair analysis now mind you there's going to be some most most people who do leave reviews are a either leaving reviews because they had a great experience or they had the worst experience possible now there's gonna be a ton of people in between that never leave reviews so you're gonna see obviously the best of the best or the worst of the worst in most cases you rarely see the middle of the pack when it comes down to reviews um it's usually one end of the spectrum or the other end of the spectrum 
uh, that can be, I guess, like I said, a deciding factor for you. But again, if it's a ton of bad reviews, then maybe you just don't do business with that company. But if there's a few bad reviews out of the hundreds of good reviews, then maybe you have a great company that you can deal with. Maybe also you ask your company that you're planning on doing business with for a couple referrals of the past customers. That way you can get a feel of how they actually got installed or how they do their installations. That way you can get a better feel for what you what you may be going through when you're experiencing with this particular company. And then maybe speak to the company manager, um, which would mean just, hey, hey, I'm, I'm doing business with you guys. I wanna know what your management is like. So at the end of the day, when you decide to actually do business with them and the issue may come up, you can resolve that issue with the manager right then and there and make sure that you have that contact information just so if something does go wrong you have a, a contact in that particular company so yeah that's going to be pretty much the 10 questions that you need to answer before actually going solar if you have any questions or you're interested in going solar with me solar ken the energy king feel free to click the link below solar ken the energy king.com book a call with me uh, like i said i'd love to help you guys out to make a decision to see if it's solar actually right right for you and if this video helped you a lot please go like comment and subscribe like i said hit that notification bell that way you know when the next video is dropping and go on all my social medias at solar can the energy king to subscribe to my channel and again i'm solar can the energy king here to help and i'm out